it's amazing how much you can get done in a very short period of time, but also yes. it's not a very pleasurable period of time. So you're not no. going to redo it. So no, no, no. You need to re- yeah, because it, it really like, it flares up some OCD part of your brain that's like, I'm mm-hmm. never going to get this done. I'm never going to get this done. And you're like, yeah. you start going like, unless I commit the rest of my life to really doing this, you know? And it's like, I'm not going to. But that just seems so fucking futile. I don't know about you, but yeah. then it's like, I could have the cleanest house, but that's all I'm doing. That's yeah. all I'm doing is top yeah. to bottom. It's kind of no shade to my mom, but that's kind of my mom a little bit. Like she's so clean. It's like unbelievable how clean she is. Uh, but it's and like, she's always cleaning and it causes her like tremendous stress when a mess is made. Do, does she have a lot of joy in that? A lot of pride rather? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And after my dad died, she like had the like different rooms in the house, like, Ba- like redone to make it i in my opinion easier to clean <laughs> like <laughs> like they were like less surface area you know like more yeah. like ornamental space you know and uh, and she's really proud of that because now it's kind of like self-sustaining a little bit i mean if you're spending so much time cleaning yeah you got to be more efficient <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I, have, I have terrible news for you okay. uh you have just passed on mm-hmm. uh i'm very sorry and you've gone on to um wherever this may be some sort of afterlife where you meet your maker, whoever oh, okay. they they might be. Sure. Uh, in your mind. And they have said to you, Mike Castle, uh, I will answer one question that you have about your life specifically that you've always wondered or about life in general. You're allowed to ask follow-up questions, but you are not allowed to ask for more questions. Oh, okay. Hmm. And I asked, just like when you're tasting wine or anything, the more you think about it, the more you're going away from your first impulse. So whatever your thought is, and then later- Yeah, okay, okay. Well, then th- this is, th- here's what I'll say is, um, <clears throat> it's pretty, it's almost dumb, but I, I kind of want to say like, what is lying? Oh, I love this. Okay, what is lying? Yeah, because uh-huh. I sometimes, I, I, I feel that in my life, I often feel like, like if you think about anything long enough, everything feels like it is a lie. Or like if you say things, like I, I feel like a story, uh, uh, an actual experience I had almost starts to become a lie the farther away it is from my real life or something. Where I'll think like, because it, to me, it, it's also based on my perspective in every experience where I'm going like, well, that's what I saw. I don't fucking know like what it really is. So then it's like, the more I think about any of my own memories, they don't feel real to me. And then also like one of my brother's he'll always tell me that I'm lying about something like from our childhood. And I'm like, I really am not, but it's like his whole belief about who I am as a person. And I always go like, but I really, it's like, I don't believe that. I genuinely am like, I, I really am saying that I'm not, I'm, I always love to piss my brother off, but I'm like, I'm not saying that to piss you off. I actually believe what I'm saying. Can you give me a specific example of something with your brother that? Yeah. Well, he's the easiest to do because I kind of interpret his interpretation of our childhood as a lie as well, where it's like, Uh he's got a lot of like, he is the victim of our parents. And I'm like, they were fine. You were horrible. (laughs) Like (laughs) like you were really mean and like angry all the time. And like, and like, this is what my mom says and my dad would say and like all, you know, but it's like, to, to me, I'm just like, get over it like the whole because my feeling of the past is that it's like it's essentially a lie in that it's the more you interact with it the less real at least for me that it feels um stop i I, it annoys me that that he is defined by it as well so i would want to ask my maker like what what is this is it all just is reality a lie that our brain tells us to make sense of the pieces of light around us uh uh i i I love to break this down a bit because what it sounds like you're not necessarily, are you asking is, is what is a lie or what is our ability to know what actually happened, which feels like two different things. Yeah, but well, I guess I, I'm, I'm at like one, I, I, we're on one aspect of the question, but I, but I also feel like it, it, it goes beyond my own personal experience where I feel like, like when you watch, like, you know, in the last fucking four or five years, I suddenly know about politics and I fucking hate it. <laughs> but as I watch it, I go like, you know, or like I, my problem, one of my mental illnesses is that I read like comments on Reddit and it's like, I'll just go through and I'll read all this stuff. And everyone 
no one believes like anything everyone is saying. Like everyone on the political spectrum is like, they're all, they're lying. That's bullshit. And I'm like, but they're not like, what if they do believe that thing you just don't agree with? What is, is your belief the lie? It's like, everything is built on it. I my, my I guess my real problem is, is anyone who believes that there's any sense of like objective reality that they are tapped into. Uh, and so it makes oh, me feel like everything is kind of, it, it's like life is built on these really complex lies that are kind of like inscrutable. Uh, yes, uh, I agree with, uh, you're, you're packing so much into each sentence that you're saying, Mike, that I'm, I'm uh, so the idea of anyone, yes, yeah, someone who claims that there is an objective reality necessarily yeah. feels problematic, right? Or, or not that there is one that they they know have they have access to it because uh -huh. all we're doing is taking whatever data we have presented, right, and and then trying to build up theories based on whatever that data is. Yeah. So the person in the political perspective who believes that they are right, um, they're just using a set of data. And yeah. other people are using a different set of data and perhaps the or using the same set of data and the in interpretations we pull out of those are different. Yeah. Correct? yeah. Um, so let's go back. To, let's for your brother. You guys are both assuming you're using the same pool of data, right? Right. Your childhood. And you're just pulling out different interpretations. Uh -huh. But I also it, feel that <clears throat> it's like the sort of whole construct of like having to be alive and, and like experiencing being alive mm -hmm. to me feels like. Like, like I have this, this sort of like tendency where when the more I think about myself or something I'm doing or wanting to be doing, the more I'll sort of go like, well, that's really small. That's like a, a grain. That's like your thinking. And it's about this and these little factors that make up who you are and your little worldview and the things you want. And like, you know, like not everyone is like, I'll be happy if I write a book or whatever, you know, I'm like whatever mm -hmm. the thing is that to yeah. me is satisfying. The more I think about that, the more I go like, well, that's really small. That's like the, the perspective I'm taking to make my experience in life feel like it has some kind of cohesion and like I'm going towards something. Uh, Whereas yes, like, you're, you are correct. It is yeah. just a small lie. You are telling yourself. Yes. So yes. You can continue. But to then go for it, yeah. on top of it, then that makes, that will kind of make me sort of reticent to trust it or want to do it. Cause then I'll go like, God, you're so small minded or something where I'll just go like, you're just going to do that thing. But it, it's like, I, I'll sort of like think then I'll, I'll go to all the other things and then I'll just kind of see each thing and go like, it's all that and everyone's just doing that. And we're all just trying to make their little, self-narrative makes sense to ourselves and to some weird reader we think will read it at some point yeah uh and but to me i just go like then i'll start to go it's like selfish to be in this way where i'm thinking about myself and trying to make myself happy and trying to do these things and then to put it in the context of talking to a creator being thing my my sense is that i want to say like what like I, i'm basically saying what is a lie in in a, in a way so i can ask like what is the truth like what is the fucking point uh oh. but i have to do it in that negative way for us <laughs> to really ask it okay. um yeah. okay so what was the truth in the sense of like what was the thing that was going to make me happy i.e writing the book is that what you mean like, you know, you're okay. speaking of what is the truth so so a few years ago i got really addicted to chess and something that uh -huh. i think a lot about with chess is that when you play um there's there's this idea of playing with high accuracy where it's basically in each position you accurately move the right piece to the right spot because you're you are literally correctly reading what the balance of the board is mm -hmm. like typically computer analysis will give you a a uh like how how right how accurate you were during that game mm -hmm. and you can see it's like once you made that move then you dipped majorly in accuracy or whatever but to me it's like that means that there is this rightness that's available on the board and you can yes. see at any moment you go like, there actually is a right answer based yes. on the idea of you don't want to lose your pieces. Each piece has a specific and set value and each piece, the movement of each piece then creates another right response that they have to make in order for us to both play accurately. And to me, I, I, I it's almost like I want to ask that. It, it's like, that's almost like a perspective I have where it's like, what is the accuracy then like what is if you could do this perfectly 
what is it? Because it's like, we'll hear things that uh, they're, oh, they're, what about a priest? And you go like, well, there a lot of them are child rapists, you know? Or you go like, what about Mother Teresa? And you go like, I heard she was like really an evil person. Or you're like, you know, what about any of these people that we think of as being these things? Or even like, for me, it's like a writer I really love. And then you go like, he did it perfectly. And then everyone's like, he was actually an asshole. He was actually a psychopath. He was actually manically depressed. He had all of these problems. So it wasn't 100% accurate there either, you know? Not, not that I'm even a, a going for accuracy. It's more just like, is there any? Like, yep. what is the way to do it where it's like, you're not, hurt, you're not hurting anyone. You're helping everyone that you can. You're making your life valuable to yourself and to others. And like, you know, like, is it, you actually, this is a joke you once said to me at IO, which was basically if someone is going to have a baby they should have to go up to every orphan and say like not you i'm not adopting you i'm not adopting you you know and to me i go like it's sort of like that where it's like you there are so many pieces and to get them all accurately it's like just how do you do it with without there it, it's just it's it's so bad like the whole experience mm -hmm. uh, of trying to like live well and accurately or so, or like thoroughly it, it's it's so like riddled with doubt and perceptions that things are lies or self lies what you said that well to, to bring it back first to the chess part you said how to do this correctly and we know what that means in chess yeah. meaning there is a this it's to win the game there's by, winning yeah. yeah there's a winning and we know the value of each piece so what it yeah. sounds like we're asking with with this is uh what is the value of each action you could take in life? Uh -huh. But again, what does that even mean? Because it's not a game that we're clear yes. about. So yes, it's not yes. like you're saying this was a great writer, but it was manic depressive. It's an implication that, well, to play the game right, you can't have been a great writer and manic depressive. But the fact is, we're all it's if we're all playing a game no one has told us what the end was what we're yes. striving towards so it's like you're all pieces on the chessboard and now they're like however you want it well however yeah. you want to move them and do and, it and and the size the size of life is so like it we don't even talk about it enough even though we do talk about it a lot <clears throat> we're so small the idea of it having anything like cosmic significance is none like it's just like it makes sure. no sense yeah and so to me, I just go like, I honestly, for me, it's like, uh, I feel like I have to ask a very abstract question of this maker because I just so don't believe in it. Like I, I yeah. am such a nihilist that I just go like, I, I almost would want to just have a little fun with it if it happened because yeah. I'm just like, no, 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 no. I can't yeah. even wrap my mind around that at all. So um, what would that look like? Have a little fun with it. So great. So now you approach this maker as this yeah. nihilist. You're like, I don't, I do not believe in you. I don't yeah, know yeah. who the fuck you are I'm talking to. What it it would that? feel like kind of like you're watching like Scanner Darkly or like um, Waking Life while like extremely like drunk and high and like trying to wake up is what I assume the experience would feel like for me uh, because my brain would be wanting to create so many conflicting variables that can't make sense. Like, I feel like I would want it all to seem so impossible as like a, like a last burst of my contrarian instinct that says like, this can't exist. So mm -hmm. then through my own, if we're going with like contact, uh, that Sagan movie book, oh, whatever, yeah. that, that logic of like, I'm creating whatever the thing is through my perspective or whatever. I think it, it would just be like chaos where it's, you know, it's like, all these moving pieces it's constantly changing it's a voice that sometimes is not speaking in a known language it's just mm. and i'm just kind of staring at it just going uh, like, what's a lie <laughs> <laughs> does this uh you know it's so funny whenever uh, i describe myself as a nihilist as well and by the way i still stand by that joke if you're gonna have a kid you have to tell every orphan i think that's very life. funny i think about it all the time i mean you said that to me like eight years ago and i yeah. still think about it all the time well uh, uh, i appreciate that uh, um, but i also i feel like you can't call yourself a like you're not allowed to call yourself a nihilist because people get scared like i i feel like i yeah. always have to say it really light but i'm like i'm not like and I'm not like um, an evil person or something. I'm just like, I want everyone to be good to each other and I want good things to happen and I try and be helpful to everyone I meet and all that sort of stuff. But I'm like, uh, but it's just, we're, we're animals. <laughs> like that, and that's as far as it, that's, that's as far as it goes. I agree. With, it immediately will bring up something people like, this must be, because it can, like the implication that nothing has any value, which is which, uh, how, um, uh, any inherent value. Uh, yeah. 
is terrifying to people. But it was also I was going to comment on the way you delivered it. You had such like a nice smile on your face. And yeah, very, yeah. Like a very broadcast television way to say yeah. that you're a nihilist. Yeah. Um, but as and kind of tied into all all this to some degree, is there something that provides a sense of uh peace meaning purpose definition for you given the 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 um way in which your brain is constructed and the way you view I, the world? reading and just like learning in general like those mm-hmm. are those are like like nice fucking drugs to me where i'm just like i i'll just sit and i'll read a book for like six hours and i'm just like that feels fucking amazing to me and or like just habitually learning random shit playing chess like Things where I'm like, it requires you to think about it enough that it, it's like it it becomes real. Like I, I'm like right in the middle of Brothers Karamazov right now, which is like a book I always kind of meant to read. And I mm-hmm. had a whole moment with Dostoevsky at like the beginning of the pandemic. And I'm kind of fin- finishing, I'm rounding out the bases with him now. Um, but I was like hating it. And then, cause I was like, it's so fucking boring. There's like nothing happening. This is nothing or whatever. But now I'm like right in the middle of it. And I'm I'm just like, you said something where I was like, oh, that reminds me of Brothers K. And then I was like, oh, it, it, I got like a shot of like dopamine just thinking about it where I'm like, mm, nice. I'm in that monastery just watching the dad be a drunk or something. And I'm like, that's basically every book that I like. It's like it's like it's real. And the reality that I live in and time and everything kind of like goes away for a little bit. And then I'm like, well, now I'm in some fucking Russian monastery and I'm watching this drunk dad make a fool of himself or whatever. And I'm like, so I get that from basically every good book I read. And so I'm kind of like always on the hunt for reading anything. I'm so envious of you or anyone who can do this to, uh, I feel like as I've gotten older, especially my attention span has dissolved to the point where being becoming absorbed in something feels like, well, I should be doing something else. Like th- yeah, something yeah, yeah. feels very. I, that's a nag. That's a nag that I, to me never goes away either. That's like my mm-hmm. mom and dad are both they were both like major workaholics. And so like, mm. I, it's almost like I, I have that nagging sense in my brain, but I enjoy rejecting it. Like that's like uh. part of the fun is going like, no, this, this mm-hmm. is something I am doing something right now, you know? And nothing else pulls your attention. No other like uh, social media. Um, uh, a, a little I, bit. Like I, there's this thing in, in I'm going to really do my best to not talk about chess because it is not interesting. But um, <laughs> there, there, there's this thing in chess that are called chess puzzles. And it's kind of like what we're talking about before where it's like, it, it's, there are people called chess composers and they, they create puzzles where there is one right answer that yields the most material for whatever the piece that's going to move first is. Uh-huh. And I find these to be so addicting. I think about them all day long and it's, it's, it is delicious. They're the most enjoyable thing to do once you really get into chess. Mm-hmm. That, that will pull my attention a lot where I'll be like doing something and then it, it's almost like if I have a moment where I'm reading and I feel like good or smart I'll go like well what is something else that makes me feel good or smart and I'll go like oh what if you could go solve a puzzle real quick and then like you'll go over and do that but then I'll get absorbed doing that and then I'll, I'll fail one and then I'll be like god fuck I'm such an <laughs> idiot and then I'll be like no you know who the real idiots are and then I'll go to like Instagram and I'll like, <laughs> uh, it's not that direct but it would be like it's like it, it does open up a thing. It's like the phone is the worst, my worst enemy in terms of uh, giving focus to the things that actually bring me joy. Because I also yeah. think in tweets and it's it's in a way that feels bad, like it feels like a mental illness. Like I'll just like, like a- think the same phrase over and over. And then I'm mm-hmm. like, and it's like, it's like under a certain amount of characters. And it's like a joke. It's like a one sentence joke. And I'll just like keep thinking it. And I'll be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I have to tweet that right now just to like get that out of there. You know, where it's like it's all taking up space in the brain or something. I'm impulse even before Twitter or or like were you? No, 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 no. no. It, it's from it's from honestly, it's from I remember one of my first jobs in LA. They told me to get on Twitter and I was like, and what is it? And then I remember looking at it and being like, Oh, I kind of get it. And then it, it's like that is like the beginning of the illness where I was it, it's like all, ever since then my brain's always going like oh yeah, I wonder if I could condense that thought into a little tweet or something. And it, it just becomes like, it's because it's there, my brain wants to give it something. I don't have that with Instagram. Like, I, I Instagram is very obligatory to me. There's something about Twitter where I'm like, <clears throat> it kind of embodies like a lot of the things I like. <clears throat> like it's writing, it's reading, it's like socializing, it's like nihilism. <laughs> It's like, it's, it's like also character. efficiency. 
That's what huh? it sounds like. It's efficiency, yeah. which it yeah. sounds like is what you're speaking about to some degree of like, what is the best I can do in this space? What is the yeah. most ag- – and you're and so now there's a character limitation. So you're like, what is the funniest thing or the most thought-provoking thing, whatever I can do yeah. within these these limits? And, and I, like, you know, I like writing like short stories and stuff. And like – so sometimes it's like I'll kind of like have a thought and it's it's almost like – well, is that something I should make a note of and try and use in a meaningful way? Or can I just shit that out and just like put that on Twitter, you Mm -hmm. know? And a lot of the time it's like, it's like to use Twitter kind of like uh, relieves the burden of like having to actually do something with that thought, you know, where it's like, you can have a, a, literally you can have a joke that if you think about it in a different way, could like become a pilot, but you go like, or I can do none of that work, make it Mm -hmm. one sentence and then just tweet it and it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Get a few uh, people to like it, get that sort of... Yeah. Uh, but Jesus rock. Christ, if anyone gives me a note on it, I will fucking kill them. <laughs> you know a note I mean? on Twitter? Yes, yeah, so I'm like, dude, I get notes all day on all this other fucking bullshit. I'm like, yeah. if you're going to give me a note on a tweet, I will fucking block your ass right now. <laughs> Because it comes from a very personal place that this is yeah really that, that <laughs> it just happens. i find it so i just like hate that anyone can say any like i really feel like twitter should just be for comedians and, and like <laughs> people, people like trying to affect change like it should be like uh, one of the other it, it shouldn't just be people who go like you got dumb hair like it's like you shouldn't be on there like whoever uh, you like these you you shouldn't just be able to say anything when i like like lauren has sometimes talked about me on podcasts or something and then people will send me a message going like, hey, hope this isn't offensive, but I heard Lauren talk about you on a podcast and I think you have ADD. And I was like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> like, you're yeah. just like sending me a fucking tweet that said, what the fuck? Uh, yeah. And to me, I go like, they, we should not have the ability to just say whatever we want to whoever we want because we thought about it. It's yeah, just- no, uh, uh, I would uh, certainly agree with that. So I, that's why I question why you have this where you go down Reddit comments. It feels like you're only f- you're like feeding this anger beast, right? You're yeah. never I can't imagine yes. that ever is done. And you're like, I feel good. I feel good. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I'll actually because I feel like you you want to hear about the darkness uh, on this podcast. I'll, I'll tell no, you this one. Not it, at all. I mean, if I'm open to hearing about. Well, it, well I, I mean, like the mental the mental darkness, basically, <laughs> where I'm saying like there's something on reddit and the internet that was like awakened in me when i was like a kid where like i i remember just like seeing there was this like horrible movie thing it was like snuff film kind of stuff it was called like the faces of death oh and, i like, remember that yeah you're terrible. my like friends like showed it to me when i was like 10 and i it, it like it was so horrific to me but then it also became i was like it was like I saw a reality that I really did not think existed. And then I'm like, it really does or whatever. And it has sort of caused this thing, this like, I have this like urge to see the like horribleness that like my brain wants to tell me doesn't exist. I like kind of like want to confirm that it does. Mm -hmm. And so like reading like Reddit comments or like, you know, seeing like not suitable for work sort of like, I don't know, pictures and videos of like war happening around the mm-hmm. world and shit. I'm like, for whatever reason, I, my, I want to see that stuff. And, and I want to be like, I, I like want to be made to feel sick over it basically. And it, it's like, it calls out to me like at night, like I'll just go like, <sighs> and then I'll just like go and I'll like look at Reddit and I'll see like the evil things people are saying to each other and the evil things happening in like Myanmar right now. And like just that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's like, I, it, it's, it's like a really bad instinct I have, but it's really hard for me to ignore. It, like in the depths of your nihilism, is it a way to reassure, like, I still feel empathy or like, uh, I know, no, no, I'm, I'm so empathetic. It makes me want to cry all the time, but it, yeah. it's more, I'm like, it, it's like, <sighs> it's almost like a confirmation of all of my worst fears. And I feel like I want to have that as often as possible because Mm -hmm. it's like so easy to, instead of feeling that way to sort of like give in to the comforts of like religion or like belief or like stuff like that. And I go like, it's easy to start to believe in those things or to believe in like the dopamine or serotonin that's being released in my brain on a a given day of good things happening or something. Mm -hmm. And instead of wanting to fully give into that, I go like, well, let's see how unfair and cruel and bad the world really is. And then I'll look and I'll go like, yeah, it's really horrible. But then it makes me feel both thankful and then that sort of comfortable sad that I I kind of always feel. Um, 
yeah, there's like a grounding nature to it a reminder yeah a little bit like, yeah 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 and uh, i feel like good books do the same thing for me where it, it's just like he'll just go like man unfair bad shit just constantly happens it's like I, I think I have an instinct where I really want to like always avoid like entitlement or also thinking that because I am like good natured person or that like I have like that I want good things for other people or that I'm in a certain moment in my life that I'm entitled to things happening in a certain way that follows a certain narrative. And so I think I like to sort of like keep myself always aware of like the random chaos we actually live in. And, you know, I, I feel like it's something about like experiencing death or being a, 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 at any moment in your life preoccupied with death. It's like you start to, it, it's like you, you feel like you know this secret, which is that like everything, it, it's like actually random, you know, where you go like, it's true randomness where I've been with people and like, I'll, there's this thought, I like hear people, it, it's like, um, it's like implicit in a lot of various kinds of weird things people will say, but it's like, that they'll think like, because right now I'm doing something that's so asinine or because I haven't done the thing that is my life dream, I can't die right now. Like, <laughs> I, I, I really remember I was in a car with this girl this one time and then like, she, we almost got hit by a fucking truck, like oncoming, like she was like talking to me and I was like, we almost died. And then she goes like, that would have been so dumb. Like, we're just like here doing blah, 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 whatever for like no reason. And I really remember being like, yeah, that's why it definitely could happen. <laughs> it's yeah. like the, your perception of your narrative has absolutely no bearing on the reality around you. Like that car will still hit and kill us and it doesn't yeah. matter. And, and also the implication is like a one-legged like rice farmer somewhere. It, yes. you know, it's like, and they die, you know, and they fucking yes. get some sort of disease from the soil. They were, well, they, of course they were going to die. They were doing their dream. It's okay. Yeah, to yeah exactly. It's like, no, 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 it, their story was over. They, it had all yeah. happened exactly as it was supposed to. Yeah. Uh, it, I think it's like, it, it, it's a type of thinking that is critical to not give into. And I, I feel like for me, it's like giving into, I, I don't know. I remember like when, um, like when, when ISIS was like a really a thing everyone was talking about. I remember being like, I'm going to like really look and I'm going to like really see all of this absolutely unbelievable, like horrible, barbaric shit that's happening. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go like, and it's really happening. It is real. Yeah. And it's like, it's part of the exact same reality that like you being mad that you're not getting up on this stage tonight because someone <laughs> couldn't show up. It's happening in that same reality or whatever. Uh, and so I feel like, I, yeah, I feel like for me, it's like that is a constant thing. I, I try to sort of like, it, it's basically like the darkest version of mom saying like there are kids starving in Africa. I'm going like, well, and they die. I guess I should have to see that as punishment for not doing that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Would I, would I, <clears throat> do you worry? That I feel like in trying to put my brain in that mental state that I would not be able to pull myself back out. Do you know what I'm saying? Like absorbing yeah. too much of that, I would because that is the downside of being fully nihilistic and not having enough basic chemicals in my brain of like, then mm -hmm. that becomes a comfortable dark pool of people are fucking dying. Look at this. People are cutting people's yeah. heads off because they're no, they don't have the religious freedom that they hope to have or they're yeah. or in this total are, randomness it, that is yeah. based totally so, on random biology. Yeah. So I'm going to supposed to sit down and write a pilot. You're telling me I got to do work today when that's like, I wouldn't be able to do the life shit. And yeah. that's what I feel like I'll live too much on that side. So I wonder how you, I think I'm, I'm like more of like two minds or like more scatterbrained than you are like, mm -hmm. or, or it's like, I'll just be like, because I'm like really happy in my day-to-day -day life. I like love my life. I love everything I'm doing. I love writing. I love comedy. I love all the oh, stuff I, I do. I fucking hate you. <laughs> yeah, it's really bizarre. But I'm also like at literally at the exact same time, I'm like yeah. always literally the most depressed I have ever been. And I'm, like, I'm serious. It's like, it's know, always, it's are. always absolutely are. simultaneous where I'm going like, like part of enjoying myself is also at the same time going like, man, life is horrific. Oh my yeah. God. And it's kind of like, it's this like weird duality that I'm like, I just like live within that. I, I don't know. It's like, uh, cause I would say, as you're talking about, like you wouldn't be able to pull yourself away. I'm like, oh yeah, same. I'm never out of it. I'm always in that. Like I'm still, always like live a good life. Like you still yeah. do that. I'm not talking right now. And you're like, you're surrounded by like empty bottles of beam and you're like yeah. bleeding and like, yeah, 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 like no. trying to tie off. You're still like doing a life. To, to me, it's like, you know, it's like, 
I tend to gravitate towards like either like really dense, almost unbelievably boring old fiction or like really like sort of uh, magical realism, like really artsy kind of all over the place. And the thing that both of those things always do is they go like the thing that we're already saying in this, that it's like, it's all happening at once. It's like, they'll jump between someone who really cares about money and he's trying to like fucking drain these farmers of whatever they have to offer. And then over to a painter who like loves to like just use the color blue. And it's like, all of these things are all happening simultaneously. And so to me, I'm like, I, it, it's, it's like, it, I, I just kind of, a, a, it's almost Zen where I'm just like, I just actually accept that it's all happening at the same time. And I just go like, I am, I, I, I had a moment in my life where I really was like, if I just don't ever expect to not be depressed, I'll probably be okay. Where mm -hmm. I go like, no part of me is going like, I wish I wasn't depressed. I just go like, oh, it's just like, it is what it is to be alive. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's like, there's no part or, or like, <clears throat> you know, a lot of actors have that thing where they're like, they hate to watch themselves act. And they're like, I look like such an idiot. I'm so ugly, like all that sort of stuff. I used to kind of have that. And then I was like, I just accept that as a given value. I, I, if I look at myself, I go like hideous, dumbass, moron, can't believe it. But I also go like, and that's just the base. That's just, that's zero. Yeah. And then if I do anything that's even remotely funny, I'm like, hey, nice. That's up from zero. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that's, as, that's uh, how, I, how I kind of see everything. Yeah. Uh, I can relate to so much of that, of, uh, you know, as I've gotten older, like the, uh, just just being uh, I don't want to ever be surprised that I'm depressed. You know what I mean? Like, yes, if exactly. I want to wake up and be like, I can't believe I'm still depressed. Like the days that I'm not super depressed, I'm like, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't, yeah. know. I don't know. If, I don't know if I like this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which you said something comfortably sad, you said, which I think mm -hmm. is such a like a great and I've had therapists be like, you know, you you partially define your personality by your depression. You have to be at least aware that you're doing that. Yeah. And I'm like, OK, sure. Um, but that's that sounds like something like there? every ex-girlfriend I've ever had would say to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you like being depressed or like, yes, you like, yeah. Um, and perhaps there is a comfort into it, but it's like, um, what, what is your other option? It's not going yes. away. I am medicated yes. for a long time. Yes, I, same, do, same. I do all sorts of things that are attempting to get me out of that. Oh yeah. None People of are like, well, you should exercise. You should socialize. Yeah. You should do yeah, this. Yeah. You should do this. Yeah. I do all those things. I'm like, oh yeah, but I'm still super depressed all absolutely all the time. But I'm like, yeah. It just is what life is, I think. Like for the the creature that is me in the same way that like photosynthesis occurs, for me, like my <laughs> chemistry is just such yeah. that it's just like, you're always gonna just be depressed. But to me, I go like, that literally just is reality. Yeah. You know, it's like, it just is life. It just is what it is. I don't well, there's some there's an expression <laughs> called the depressive reality in which uh, de depressive people tend to see things more as they truly are because they are prone to, not look for that as a woman in the car said oh i couldn't die now what a waste yeah be. whereas the depressed is like of course you die now what yeah yeah what and then you afterwards you go like fucking awesome that i didn't just die that's great yeah you know and you're like although would have been a great relief would have yeah. been a good yeah. relief and then it's done it's right. fucking done <laughs> I, you know everybody else is gonna have a lot of cleanup to do they gotta plan a lot of shit a lot of yeah. crime but not me baby i'm out I'm yes sir out. um so I want to say, just along with this novel concept you're saying, where it's, you know someone wants to paint only in blue, someone is after a lot of money, it kind of feels like these are all different ways to play chess, kind of what these yeah. novels are speaking to you about. But even I think that's what's nice about a novel as opposed to chess is there is not as much of an end result with a novel, right? It's not yeah. like it has to be this thing when it's done. So it is kind of a nice metaphor for how you choose to live, right? Yes. There's not a win. But, but also, a... like, even with chess, it's like, what I'm really talking about is basically like when two computers play each other. Yeah. And if two computers play each other, it'll like be a draw every time. Yeah. And so like, it's almost, <clears throat> it becomes truly more about like the right steps of accuracy than about the actual end result of winning. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I feel no anxiety when I play other people in chess, even if I think they'll beat me. Because I just go like, it's like about the board. It's like less about like me even. Like, I'm like, I'm not even playing you. I'm just going like, is this the most accurate thing here? And I'm like, I'm not that I want to beat you. It's more I go like, I wonder if that's right. Like, it's really fun to 
play online because afterwards you can do the computer analysis and it tells you your accuracy or whatever. Mm -hmm. And to me, I go like, I, a lot of the time don't even like think about if I won, like, it'll be at the end of the game. I'll go like, Oh shit, I won. And I'll be like, it's cause I'm more going like, is that right for it to go to fucking E6 or do I want to do that? You know? And it's like, to me, I'm like, then when I look at it and it says like, that's the right move. I'm like, nice. <laughs> and I'm like, I care about that more than the other thing where I'm like, it, it feels like it, it's like um, a lot of my friends in college were math majors and I was a English and rhetoric major. And they would always go like, I would like kill myself if I was doing English because there's like not a right answer. There's never mm. a right answer. Yeah. And, and so they would always talk about with math, there's a right answer. And I go like, I kind of get that with these other things where I go like, there's this like right answer. And that, that is, I see how that is comforting uh, in, in that sphere uh, more so than that I'm pursuing the win or whatever. It sounds like you're incredibly present when you're playing chess, if that's what you're more concerned about. Yeah, it's almost like disembodied. It, where, where it's yeah. like I, it's like you're both present, but also like, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's like you want to be in a flow state, but you're not. But you see where you kind of like see the line of the stream that could get you into the flow state. And that's what you want to do, which is close to being present, I think. Yeah. But I also I, I, almost feel like I, I'm always so distracted with every single thing that I'm doing that I'm like, I'm doing it, but I'm also like thinking about the other thing. And I'm like, I don't know, pre a present is something I, I sort of mentally struggle with. Cause I go like part of my um, thinking in any, any given moment is kind of like that I'm like also in some other sort of like comfortable space that I kind of feel like a little bit is formed by like doing a lot of improv or having like a, a, like a lot of like a creative output of some kind where it's like, if you're like always ready to jump into a bit, there is like something alive in a different part of your brain that is ready yeah. to be activated at any moment. And I think that's true too for like creative writing and stuff like that, or like even writing scripts, where it's like, there's this other life that is like behind your amygdala or something like in your brain. And it's like, it, it, to me, I basically always feel like I'm like always partially present but there's like this other part of my brain where like there's this like version of me who's like, well, maybe if I said this and I'm like working on like some other yeah, thing. Yeah. And then later on, I'll be like, like if I then return to some thing I'm writing or some shit, then I'll be like, oh yeah, you like solved that earlier. Like you, there was some moment where you kind of like fixed that and now you can write the end of that thing or something. Uh, uh, I hear you saying, when I improvise, I do feel like I describe that as a the only time I'm fully present, but I'm not yes. fully present in the sense of like, I'm also, uh, the back, I'm like, well, what has happened previously and where yes. are we in the Yes, you're listening to this like really elaborate narrator who like yeah. really sees everything. Yeah, so it is odd to be like, this is when I'm most present. And even then, I'm not fully yeah. what I would describe as just taking in data, just experiencing yes. life. Yes, yes, um, yes. Like a lot of the time during like good improv, like I'll, I'll think about like when you're doing a scene and like I, I can like, I'm pulling a memory right now where I like see myself saying and doing something and like actively having the thought like, okay, so this scene's working. So then the next scene we got to do is, and I'm like, I can feel myself going like, I'm actually still talking, but I'm trying to get ready to do the next thing here. Yeah. Because I'm also going like, cause that'll make my scene partner happy. And that'll oh. make the audience happy. And I'm like, there's, I'm not present. I'm like, I'm <laughs> doing all this other shit that I'm thinking about. Um, I, I would suggest, uh, you've made me think that if the question that I would ask now at the point, uh, if I were to die right now is, did, could I have lived a life in, in, if I weren't depressed? Meaning yeah. like, if like, uh, your past girlfriends, my therapists were correct. were like, you are choosing this. You're it's like part of your personality and you don't want to let it go. I would be curious to ask, would it have been possible for me to let it go? Or, or even more simply, was there a, a medication combination I could yeah. have taken and it would have gone away? Yeah, yeah. Like that to me, I would have liked to have known what it would be like. I don't know if you feel it. When I pe meet people who are, tr they not only, they might not say they're truly happy, but they exhibit all these things of happiness. Uh -huh. I am so... I don't, I, 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 I understand less about their brain than I do my dog's brain. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It seems well, so I, I always boring. feel with them, like, I am actually always drawn to those people because I go like, will you ever show me the dark side? <laughs> you know, where I go like, is there yeah, some yeah. other darkness there? Like, I, it's like, I often pursue <laughs> friendships with people like that because I go like, at some point they're going to say that they're, they're not that happy.
So you're trying to turn okay. them. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, to... yeah. I do my best. Actually, a friend of mine once called me out on this. But I have a friend who's very philosophical, and he basically kind of saw me doing this to someone where, oh. where I was going like, you're really happy in that relationship? Like, I was saying that to this one yeah. friend of mine. And my buddy was like, dude, I would be very cautious to not talk anyone out of their happiness. And I, <laughs> I basically realized, I was like, oh, I guess I am kind of trying to do that with him. Um, and I, I feel like I, I've had a lot of friend groups where that is this thing that internally a lot of people do to one another, where it's mm -hmm. like, you know, like if you're friends with someone and like you have one friend who like hates their girlfriend, you go like, why do you hate her, dude? Like, it's not, you're not dating her. It's like yeah. not about you hating her. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, that was a full tangent where I was actually just specifically thinking of one person. <laughs> but I, I love that that saying, though, uh, be careful to not talk anybody out of their happiness. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it reminds me, years ago, I used to be, be very, I loved being able to, like, break down people's uh, faith in God and, like, really. Oh, me too, me too. And just yeah. really get in there and be like. Yeah, uh, and, yes, yeah and, so, and then someone said to me, like, why would you want to take away hope from somebody? Yes, and yes. And that has stuck with me of, like you're a hundred percent. Yeah. It's like, I'm jealous through this. That's, to answer That's your questions. Cause I'm is. jealous, I guess. All that it is. I want to feel what you feel. Like a yes. lot of why I do this is that I just want somebody to tell me like, this is the thing that I do that I would ask a creator that would make me happy. So I, I'm only breaking it down in the term and, and hoping that I can't break it down. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, the, no, no, that's the same yeah. thing I'm doing. I'm like, I, I, it seems really combative because you're basically saying like, tell me how I'm wrong. And, and but yeah. I'm going like, I want to be wrong. Like, it, it's like yeah. that X Files thing of like, I, I want to believe I actually do. Yeah. Like, I'm a militant atheist or nihilist because I fucking wish I wasn't. Like, exactly. the, first, the first time you say, like, I don't think there is a God, you are desperately hoping someone will talk you out of it. Yeah. You know, like, I remember first saying that when I was like 10. And then like saying it to my mom. And then she was just like, really mad at me. And I was like, Oh, well, wait, I'm like available to be talked out of it. Yeah. You know, and I was like, for years, I just kept always going like, someone would say something and I go like, there's no God, that's insane. And then I, I truly, this is something my brother would say, I'm rewriting, but I'm like, no, I remember internally being like, just tell me how I'm wrong. Just tell me how I'm wrong. And then I, I'll be happy because I want to be wrong. Like, yeah. I, I would fucking love to believe when we die, we get to fucking, I get to hang out with my childhood dog and see my dad and shit. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't think that it's really unfortunate. I would love to think that though. I agree. I feel like we're begging for someone to be like, here's yeah. why. And, and, but in a way that was somehow able to convince us that, it, and maybe that wouldn't even be with logic or something. Um, uh, it's, it's refreshing to hear that perspective. I, I want to say one more thing about your brother and different memories. I read something. I don't remember the details of every memory after a certain point in time has been replaced with 50% different details of your life. Oh, probably so the memory illusion. Yeah. Uh, Maybe that, I mean, there's a book called The Memory Illusion oh, really? and that's yeah. like a whole thing about it where they talk about like eyewitnesses and all that sort of stuff yeah. and how like the depreciation of the actual reality of that memory, it, it's unbelievable. It depreciates faster than a car. Like it, it's fucking insane. And, and yeah, and that's what we tie like so much of how we feel value in our life or like what mm -hmm. our story is, what our narrative narrative is. And none yeah. of it's probably correct. None of it. Yeah. Your brother and you are both so fucking wrong. About yeah, your but the difference is, is I say that. I go like, yeah. we're both wrong. We're like, it wrong, doesn't like. matter. It, we're both yeah. wrong. Or like, I, I have a, a thing that I think annoys Lauren a lot where she'll tell me something someone said and she'll go like, well, they're, they're going through this and, and she said this or whatever. And I go like, well, you've only heard her perspective. So like, we just don't know if any of that is true. <laughs> like uh, you basically, it's like, I, I, I cannot accept anything in other people if it's just one person's perspective where I'm like, well, I don't fucking know. How do you know that he said it like that and like this and all that sort of stuff? Um, and to me, that's the whole, that's all of reality where I go like, it's all fucking chaos. <laughs> like we just, it's just my little perspective. I don't. Yeah, it's all pro we're all problematic narrators. No one yes. is. Uh, yes, yes. No, no one is trustworthy. Uh, Mike, do you have any final questions for me? Any thoughts? Yeah, I could probably think of a good one. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I yeah okay I guess like. So, I I often will will really relate to someone. Mm -hmm. because I sense that they are depressed mm -hmm. right and like I, I feel like you and I became friends because I, I felt a similar sense of like to me I go like it's like you see the reality like I see it or something yeah. you know yeah, and I especially in a setting like IO where it's like 
so many like people are so delusional in, in that kind of setting where they're like, I'm the funniest person ever. And you're like, dude, you are legitimately not funny, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it would be like, or, or like, you know, I'll, I'll be doing a show and I'm like, dude, I am good at improv, whatever. And I'm like, and I'm playing to an audience of one person, you know? And I go like, and we, so existing in that space, you know, you look for people who are seeing that reality and not the delusion as much. Yeah. Um, do you think that that is good? Like to that, like we, we try to find one and like, I really always, I, I gravitate so quickly towards people who are, who I can feel are like me in that they feel like uh, it, it's like all kind of this like charade of silliness, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, do you think that's good? Do I think it's good? I think it's um, much like wanting to be proved wrong about that there is a God, <laughs> that there isn't a God. It's a way to find some comfort because it's kind of a scary way to go through the world uh -huh. uh, where you feel and, and like it, it's compounded by feeling the loneliness that's in that when you all feel like this is a charade and a joke. Um, and we both know we're going to die alone. And like, yeah. that's just the case for everybody. Yeah. Like that. To me, I also go, I was actually thinking about that phrase the other day. And I was like, so <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, that's I just the same as everything where I go like, that's like, uh, I, I fart to me. I'm like, it's literally the same where I just go like, Are yeah, you... it's just like an absolute fact of nature. It does not, I don't, it doesn't affect me in any way. I, I see that <laughs> other, other than the sense of like the sheer terror perhaps it would be nice to have someone to distract you that's it that's all yeah thing. yeah i don't want anybody to die with me i just want somebody to be like look over here look at this shiny light yeah. like so I, you know i would actually say that that's probably a characteristic difference that we have is that uh, i i think about this a lot where i go like that would actually cause me to feel like anxiety if there's like this other person and they're denying uh, yeah. this moment in reality where i go like no 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 i want to just go like ah now it's happening because i'm like i'm uh, already always alone everyone's always alone yeah, I, yeah, I get yeah. to hang out with my best friends all the time and it's fucking awesome but i'm like even in that i'm like it's fun because i'm alone but i'm like with them and they're alone and together we're doing this thing that feels nice where we're connecting yeah, or whatever yeah. and i go like but that all exists in my mind too so i go like if in the moment you're dying i'm just like you're you're just as connected to everybody else if you choose to be like yeah. all of your memories and people and experiences and feelings it's all right there too so it's like so what if you're alone? I, I don't know. That to me, I it, it doesn't like a dog. Me you want to slink out into the woods and just die with no. Yeah, around. or a cat. Yeah, I want to climb yeah. into a cupboard that you guys forgot you have, and I'll die in there. Yeah. You know? uh, I hear as long as I'm just so high on morphine, I don't give a fuck. Like it's just mm -hmm. the fear, and I feel like people, like human touch, can ev evaporate fear for a moment. Or, yeah. but you're right. Someone denying the reality would be the worst. Yeah. If you're not dying, so I'd be like, no, shut the fuck up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, this is happening, and I yeah. know it. But I truly, like, I, I picture, like, foxholes in, like, fucking Saving Private Ryan, where they're like, oh, yeah. you're gonna be okay. Like, the idea of someone would be like, you're gonna be okay. I'm like, Jesus yeah. Christ, that would be the last thing I would want to hear as I'm but dying. But let's say you're on the other side, and it's you or me, and they're like, you're dead, dude. It's fucking over. Like, this is it. Give in. With well, there, there's a middle ground. Like, I, I would rather they go, like, it, it's almost like uh, distill things down to pure physicalization. Go, like, breathe, breathe, like, you know, it's yeah. okay. You know, like, it, it's almost more like I, I would prefer the middle ground of going like, like where it's, it's implicitly acknowledged that it is bad and you are dying, but it, they're yeah. just going like, it's okay. <laughs> you know, where I'm like, yeah. it is okay. I, I don't know. I, uh, I, I, really I, like I feel less anxiety about that than I do about a lot of other things. Uh, I do like, but to answer your question, so yes, I do think it's good to seek out some people just in the sense of so you don't feel utterly alone in a world that in which you are truthfully utterly alone. Uh huh. Um, okay, I got one. I got one other yeah. question as well. <clears throat> like, I don't know. This isn't even fully formed, but it's something I've been thinking a lot about recently, which is basically mm -hmm. like, wh what about like sociopaths and mm -hmm. narcissists? Mm -hmm. Like, I find them to be really scary. Like, they, they're like, <clears throat> it's sort of like how I think that someone would misperceive someone who says that they're a nihilist. Mm -hmm. I go like, no, I, I don't believe that there's, I, I'm more like a physicalist where I believe like we're just part of the body, the body dies and that's kind of, the, that's all she wrote. Um, but then the people where it's like, they're a narcissist, they're completely self-obsessed, they're like solipsistic, they believe like that they are the center. I find them to be so scary, <clears throat> but I also have an instinct with them, kind of like what we're talking about with people who are happy, where I go like, I really want to like shake them out of it. So mm -hmm. like, I, I know some people and some of them were IO people where I go like, I genuinely believe you are either a full on sociopath or a full on narcissist. 
Mm -hmm. but I have this like want to be like, get out of that, dude. <laughs> what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, do you think that like these certain, because these are psychological conditions, you know? Yeah. Do you think that like, is there hope for those people to be awakened into a different kind of thinking, different kind of reality? And is that even good? Because I also think like it do, because you don't want to talk someone out of being happy because it's whatever. But sometimes like I'll want to talk someone out of being like a different state that is also not the one I like. So, sometimes I want to talk people out of apathy, but I'm going like, but I'm kind of almost like trying to walk you into just being like upset like I am where I'm like, it, it's not <laughs> apathy it's is bad. Yeah. I want you to be mad about it at least like with yeah. me and, and like, but is that like ultimately is that valuable at all or is like, that like also kind of a cruelty to, I, I can only speak about it in the sense of not knowing the full psychological physiological underpinnings of narcissism and uh sociopathy so I, if it is like diabetes where it's like type one let's say in which their body is simply not producing something then you can't talk we can't talk out somebody who that, right. that's what's causing it yeah, um, yeah but if it feels like it it, it, it is a, a choice um, are you say it's like revealing the curtain to a narcissist, like pulling it back and be like, oh my God, there are other people in the world who are- Yeah, and, and going kind of like, like in the same way that you can accept like like severe depression. Oh, I just remember mm -hmm. something else I want to say. Uh, in the same way that you can accept severe depression as being a baseline experience for reality. Mm -hmm. Like, is it possible for those people to accept that it's like, you're a narcissist, but like, can you also beyond being a narcissist, can you, can you compartmentalize that in the same way one can potentially co compartmentalize? Like, I, I guess now we are talking about pure psychology, which I do not know a lot about. Uh, I don't know, but that's fascinating. Can you be a self-aware narcissist? Yeah, or like, yeah. It's like a tool you can bring out when it, when it benefits you, or you yeah. can also I realize. I guess maybe that's what a lot of our, our A-list actors are possibly. But isn't it like a sense of like your, yeah, you learn like much like you can teach someone who perhaps is, some, is on the autism spectrum of like, you can teach teach behavior modification uh -huh. like in in environments that are you know as opposed to fully getting a a, a rid of the syndrome do you know what i'm yeah. saying so, yes exactly because that's uh, what i'm saying too with the depression where i'm like don't even think that you're ever getting rid of it that's yeah, like yeah. the first mistake is like yeah, yeah. That you think it's gonna go away it's like just don't even think that because then when it looms again you'll be like it's my back i'm like it's yeah it's there. It's always back. I would love it's a therapist who was just like, look, this is it, dude. Like, it's like, yeah. it, it, you get your arm shot off, you don't get a new one replaced. And you had a, a doctor who was like, it'll grow back. It'll grow back. <laughs> a fucking lunatic. It's yes. not growing back. Yes. It's okay. Just tell me what to do now yes, with yes. my one arm as opposed to, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, do you, like severe depression. Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome where people no. think they're literally dead? And they start to smell themselves as if their body is decaying because there is so little. Uh, it's like the farthest end of depression, essentially. Oh, uh, yeah. Sounds extremely right. Russian, honestly. Wow. And, yeah, so yeah. Russian. Uh, <laughs> um, what was your other? What was the question? What okay, so this is this is a this is an actual. This is a very this is a real question, and I'm actually asking for advice on this. This yeah. is something I, I kind of do struggle with in my life, which is. <clears throat> It's almost like gatekeeping, which is that I'm like, I have been outspokenly depressed since I was a little kid. Like mm -hmm. I would just, it's always been a part of who, who I am. And, but then it's a thing I eventually accept and I'm fine with and all this sort of shit. Now though, I feel this, and it really has popped up for me during this year of quarantine where when someone is like newly depressed, I, I, I like can't give a fuck where I'm just like, <laughs> You're just depressed now? Oh my god. Uh, I don't know, dude. Um, like truly, I'll hear someone talk about it. They're like, I've kind of become depressed. I'm like, oh, oh no. However, will you survive? Where I'm just like, I it, it's truly, it's like hard for me. That's like the one thing I will truly lack a sort of empathy with. Cause I'll just go like, I don't know what to tell you, man. Um yeah. I uh well, I'm glad I, I I've always felt more. that. Like people who are just like this past year has been really tough. I just don't know. I'm like, what were you doing before? I'm like, what, it's what? exactly the same as it, last year. 
Yeah, no different. You no just different. got. You just don't get to distract yourself as much with other shit. I think that's what it is. The lies that you've been telling yourself, they were quickly taken away. But yes. I, said to, I said to my wife many months ago, I was, I was, you know, uh, I was, um, I was sad before this. I'm sad during that. I'll be sad after. Yes. Like this yes. is what this is just what it's going to be during the quarantine. So I, I do relate fully to people like that. But because it, it feels I, also to me like I'm like, oh, welcome. Like yeah. when people are starting to get depressed during quarantine, I'm like, oh, this is. This isn't that different from how my life has always been. <laughs> Where I'm yeah. like, I'm at home. I spend a lot of time by myself. I like do a lot of whatever my bullshit is that I spend my time doing. And I'm like, now a lot of you guys are doing it too. And I'm just like, it's yeah, isn't it crazy? It sucks. You got to think it, about all this shit. <laughs> it's like um, anyone who begins anything new, uh, it, like you have to have some sort of sympathy for like the beginning of the process. Like you start to work out for the first time. Like, I'm really sore. It's tired. Blah blah. I don't want to do this. Uh, I, I assume uh, it's like when someone, um, or it's like you have someone close to you pass away and they've never experienced something like that. It's like guiding yes. through this process, but it doesn't mean it's not fully annoying to have to guide them through that process. Yes. That, that one in particular, I'm like, because it's, it's almost like that with that, because I've experienced the loss of a parent. Like, I feel like I'm like, that is clinical to me. There's like mm -hmm. a, a very specific way of how to help someone who has just lost a family member. Because mm -hmm. to me, I go like, because there are a lot of ways that are not helpful and I experience all of those. And so I mm -hmm. go like, I kind of know, I know the path for that one. When it comes to depression, I'm like, that's so nebulous. And in my experience, so eternal that the idea that you're coming to it now is like crazy to me mm -hmm. it, where I'm just going like, whoa, that's, I'm almost like jealous and mad at you. <laughs> if you're like just coming to it now, where I'm like, fuck you. Oh my God. And this sounds terrible. It makes me immediately judge them as like, oh, you weren't, you're not that, you're not that in tune of a person. Yeah, like, which oh, I know so is you like just woke up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, which I know is a horrible thing to say. No, I like know, an I know. egotistical, depressed, yes. the worst. Because that's what I'm saying too. I'm like, well, would my maker have said like, well, they, they were living more accurately than you were actually. Like, because they weren't yeah. obsessed with this one line of thinking. Um, but, to, but like, how do you even begin to guide a person? Cause I also, something I'm aware of is I'm like, oh no, as I get older, a lot of people are going to start to get into this territory that I've just always been in, mm -hmm. but now it's going to start to occur more naturally for them. Like this sort of ennui or this sense of like, that there's no purpose or that it's like that the, the, they're dying or whatever the thing is. And I go like, oh, fuck, like more, more as opposed to l fewer of my friends are going to be going through <laughs> that, I imagine. And, and I just go like, so what is even like, because also in, in a similar way that people have a knee jerk to the word nihilism, there's a knee jerk toward what you and I agree on, which is that like it, it, the, the base experience is that you will be depressed. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I go like, that is not comforting to someone who is experiencing depression, like for me to go like, but the truth and the reality is, is I want to say like, welcome, this is the rest of your life. Uh, this yeah. feeling is not, now that you're aware of it, you're always going to be aware of it. Yeah. Um, but that's not comforting to people because they want to be comforted in some other way or assured that they won't feel that way. But to me, I'm like, but that's a lie. And it's like a dangerous lie to, to tell someone like, like my mom and dad did a lot of that kind of like worldview coddling sort of stuff. Uh, and it like, I would say like, largely it like works for them and for my brothers or whatever but it to me i was like it, it it developed in me this feeling that like everything's a lie and all this sort of like everyone is in denial and all that sort of stuff and so to me i go like you got to avoid the lie you got to mm -hmm. avoid saying like it'll get better or something but what do you do well, how do you is, it'll be exactly what you just said a couple minutes ago it'll be what you say in the battlefield essentially of like there is that medium of it's not like you're gonna be fine it's okay and it's not yeah. the you're fucking go it's over dude you're yeah fine. yeah it's that uh like which will take energy it's, it's okay it's okay this is how it is but then i also remember when i was that age or, or that age of depression feeling like it, it, it's similar to the God delusional kind of thing where you go like, wait, no, I want you to tell me that God is real or whatever, where it's like, I, I'm like, I become very aware that I am now going to be frustrating to this person where mm -hmm. when I say like, yep, yep, <laughs> you know, where I yeah. go like, but I guess you're right that that is really the only option, even though it's like, it, it, it's like all part of growth. It's like letting your child fall down, I guess, as well, where you just got to yeah. go. 
yeah, this is this is going to hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think part of it, too, is like, uh, you know, the chemical levels of where people like they might not experience on the levels that we experience it, but they probably will experience it again. But you know what I'm saying? It's also. Yeah, that's uh, true. Unlike death, which is a finality of we're all going to experience it in the same way. Um, uh, I don't know if everyone after this is going to be like all of a sudden there are so many more depressive people after this. It could be, but um, I think I think depression and anxiety will take a, a big up uptick. Have a big win. Have a big win for yeah. Them. I think so. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, but it, but it's because we're going to go through that like roaring part first, where everyone's going to be like yeah like yeah. loving it and then then they're it, it's gonna like that will then create they're gonna have to unfortunately wake up and go like oh wait the reality is still fucked <laughs> like it's still yeah. really bad actually or i picture what's gonna happen during that time it's like there's gonna be these big parties and stuff and also people are gonna start having panic attacks for the first time and yeah. they're not sure why and it's because they're in crowds and that this isn't something they've never experienced before and then all this so i feel like it's going to be the swing of the pendulum will go so far that it will put people in these situations that are going to trigger them into these states so um, dude and then what are those people going to create in their children this is the thing I keep oh, thinking about where I go like, yeah. we're all going to be getting these like conditions now that we're going to be passing down. Like it's our Vietnam and shit where mm. we go like, you never leave the house. You must never yeah. leave the house. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't, you can't absolutely <laughs> just cut. Oh my God. Imagine the number of masks on tiny kids we're going to see in Santa Monica for the next yeah. 10 years that are just never. Yep. Um, uh, Mike, it was truly a pleasure talking to you. Oh yeah. This uh, was really fun. I really enjoyed this.